Well, we've talked about Victoria. We've talked about Queensland. We've talked about America. Where should we go next? Why don't we go to outer space and get the details of the world's first ever civilian spacewalk? Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, ventured 738 kilometres above the Earth's surface before billionaire Jared Isaacman stepped out of the Dragon capsule. To tell us all about it, I'm joined by astrophysicist Dr Brad Tucker. Brad, thanks for your time tonight. Can you just explain to me uh, this spacewalk? How significant is it? <clears throat> Look, when we talk about spacewalks and, and EVAs, this is one of the most dangerous parts of space travel. You're literally being exposed to the vacuum emptiness of space. And if something goes wrong there, something goes really terribly wrong very quickly. And so previously, this has always been a, a limited part of space travel uh, and one that only highly trained astronauts have done. And what SpaceX is trying to show is that there's advancements in technology that will allow less trained people to prepare for this harsh part. But also as part of this mission, they were testing a new way of doing this, meaning uh, the SpaceX capsule had never really done this sort of thing in terms of depressurization into space. And the spacesuits have never really been tested like this. So in order to advance SpaceX's own technology and goals and not wait necessarily for NASA, they were showing all in one mission that a private group and civilians, so to speak, can test equipment in space and not needing a, a national agency to do it. So it's one thing to go into space. It's another thing to do the walk, which really what I was kind of expecting them to walk, but really they kind of just popped out <laughs> of the capsule, right, and sort of looked around. So, but, but anyway, I'm not belittling it. It's amazing. How much preparation would have gone into that for those on board? I don't mean going into space, but I mean going into space and then to pop your head out of the capsule. How much preparation goes into that part, especially for a civilian? Yeah, look, you know, and firstly, as you said, they didn't really walk around, and that's partially because the crew Dragon is not even designed to have it on the space station. They literally have, like, rails that you can climb on. It's almost like monkey bars. So there was nothing really to hold on the outside, you know. It, it's slippery out there. And so that's part of the preparation. They only spent that 10 minutes each for the two of them kind of waving around and looking, but the entire process just alone was an hour and a half, and that is because the entire capsule depressurizes. So on the space station, um, there's airlock, so the most of the space station is still sealed, and only a little room is depressurized. You go in, and then you can exit out and do your EVA. Uh, here, the entire capsule had to be pressurized, but you also need to balance it with your suit pressurizing. So you're going to have to have the right balance of the capsule depressurizing and then your suit making up for that difference to keep you safe. So there's a lot of that transition, but then there's the mission takes enough time. Um, it takes over uh, two days just to get to that point. So there's a lot of these other things that they had to do in that transition uh, to get ready for their space travel. And then they're also in this very radioactive part of space, what we call the Van Allen belt, partially to test some space medicine. So there is a lot that they had to go through, especially as a person who's never really done space or been into space. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing feat. And to think this is not NASA, this is a private company doing this is uh, quite incredible to behold. Hey, appreciate you joining me tonight and giving that explanation.